Live from sunny Chelsea, it's Sweet Heat with Rick Martinez. Good morning, New York City! We are live in the Food 52 Estudio. Woohoo! I am so excited to be here. We have an incredible show for you today. We are going to be making a springtime icebox cake with rhubarb and strawberry, my favorites, but of course, my favorite segments. Who's your daddy? as well as some breakups and my new favorite workout. So make sure if you like me, if you like this series, if you want to see more craziness, you hit like and subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. Josh, is this Starbucks? Did you get me Starbucks? You know I only drink Mexican coffee, God damn it. All right, who do we have this week for Hot Tub Diaries? Uh, well, the, this, this onion and some pickled carrots. Josh, Josh. This is a springtime icebox cake, not a salad. I, I, yes, Give yes. me some vet, some fruit. Uh, God, I'm sorry. I'm get, sorry. Get out of here. I am really excited today because it's springtime in New York City and that means strawberry and rhubarb. And so that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna make an incredible jam. So I like to make them in a. What what the f Josh? Josh, do you not know the difference between a saucepan and a skillet? I'm learning. What the f I'm learning. God. All right. So, the reason why I'm using a skillet instead of a saucepan is because when I'm using really good quality fruit, I don't like to cook it that much. And so, if you're using a skillet, you're going to evaporate more of the liquid quicker. It's going to get thick quicker. And so, you're going to retain more of those fresh fruit flavors. We're going to dump in our fruit. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then we're gonna throw in our sugar and a pinch of salt. <laughs> it's blowing on me. The reason why I'm using salt is because that's gonna bring up, uh, bring out a little bit more of those tangy flavors. There's actually a lot of savory flavor in the rhubarb, and that gives you a nice counterpoint to the sweetness of the strawberries. My skillet is on medium heat. And I'm just gonna let this gently come up to temp. All of that sugar and a little bit of salt is gonna pull out the moisture and it'll start to cook. And I just wanna reduce and get out all of that liquid and get it really thick and jammy. You're not gonna get over my sh Wait. You're not Seba. Who, who the hell are you? Where's my cameraman? What the f is going on here? Jam looks really thick and delicious, and so I've taken it off heat. I threw in my orange zest and a little bit of lemon juice, and now those flavors are just gonna steep and it's gonna get really, really thick as it sits. So I have to admit something. Part of the reason why I decided to write this recipe the way I did is because I wanted to use all the ingredients that are really hard for me to find in Mazatlan that I can find in New York. And so one of those is mascarpone. I love it. It's so incredibly delicious and flavorful. It's slightly sweet, it's thick, it's so creamy and rich. And so that is going to be the base for this icebox cake. And so I wanna whip it pretty well with some sugar and some vanilla and lemon that is going to pull out all of those delicious fruity flavors that I love. And because I'm feeling kind of extra, I'm gonna be using not my normal vanilla paste, but actual vanilla bean. So I'm not using that much. I mean, I would ordinarily use an entire vanilla bean pod, but in this case, I don't want it to completely take over the dish. So I just want there to be a hint of vanilla. So I'm gonna just go in, split it in half and just scrape in these amazing seeds. Look at that. And now for a little lemon zest. I'm using both orange and lemon. I think that's a really nice combo. You're gonna get a little hit of lemon and vanilla in the cream and you'll get the orange in the jam. All right, so that's all ready to go. And so now we're just gonna mix this for about four minutes. You're kidding me. Josh, what the f There's no power on set? Are you kidding me? No, that's okay, I'll just plug it in myself, that's fine. 
Don't worry. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now we've got kind of a, a, a frosting consistency, and so I'm gonna add the cream. This is delicious heavy cream. And now we will whip it until we get some soft peaks. This looks really good. So we've got some nice soft peaks and I'm going to take a taste because I mean, why not? Mm. Oh my God. It's like all my favorite flavors in one place. Mascarpone, whipped cream, lemon, vanilla. I mean, I could literally just eat this bowl by itself, but I'm going to be good and we're going to build this cake. I love a dramatic breakup. But before any good breakup, we have to get things together. So we're gonna take some pine nuts and some pistachios and some sweet honey. A little bit of salt and give these a little mix. Get everybody stuck together. We've got the sweet, and now we're gonna give them some heat. These go into a 350 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. They're gonna get bubbly hot and caramelized, and then we'll give them a little break. Rick, I got, I got the tacos. You got tacos for lunch? I live in Mexico, I don't eat tacos in New York. Return them. Ooh, bubbly, brown, and delicious. It's time for a breakup. We get the point. <laughs> get that heart rate up and layer your icebox cake. Josh, come wipe my brow. Thank you. It's time to layer. All right, what I'm gonna do first is I've got a one cup measuring cup and I'm taking my beautiful mascarpone cream. So what I'm gonna do is I've got an offset, offset spatula and I'm just gonna go in and push this down. I've lined this nine by five baking tray with plastic. That's gonna help make sure that everything comes out nice and cleanly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dollop some of the jam around the top layer and then swirl it in. Just go in there, just give it some dollops. And so then just go, kind of swirl. There's gonna be some big chunks and that's totally fine, but just go up under and pull some of the cream up and that'll give you some of the jam on the bottom. And that's what we're going for. Okay, so next we have some strawberries. And I like, I mean, honestly, like I do this with almost every dish that I make. I like using good ingredients multiple ways. So we've got the cooked strawberries, we've got fresh strawberries, and we've got freeze dried strawberries. So it's just, when something is in season and is really beautiful, I just wanna get it in every form possible. So I'm just gonna put some of these strawberries down. Okay, so in the recipe, I called for Biscoff cookies because honestly, on the plane ride to New York, I got a little packet of these cookies and they were kind of mind blowing. And so I was like, all right, this is what I want in this dish, but couldn't find them. So, you know, next time you're on United Airlines, just take a bunch of them or you can use graham crackers or really use your any, any of your favorite crackers. Ginger snaps would be really good in this. And then for the graham crackers, just break them up and get everything to fit. If you need to break them into irregular shapes, it's totally fine. What I want is a nice even layer across the top. Now we're just gonna repeat with the layers and depending on the size of your sheet tray and you know how generous you are with your scoops and your dollops, you may have a little bit left over, but, um, but just keep going. Even if it comes a little bit over the top of the edge, that's totally fine because we're gonna freeze it and we're gonna fold it over and who doesn't like a big dramatic icebox cake? And then 
just fold it over. And now we've got an extra tall ice cream cake. Just push it down to make sure everything's flattened out. And then we're gonna freeze this for about six hours until it sets and it's gonna be really delicious. Josh! Josh! Josh, where's my glass? Okay, she is out of the freezer and it's time to unmold it. Okay, all the layers of plastic come off and it should, actually we will do, we will do the tortilla technique. Icebox cake! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, stop, stop. Oh, God, you guys are too kind. Uh, um, okay, Josh, where's my Lazy Susan? Thank you. All right. Wow, electric. <laughs> Fancy New York Lazy Susan. <laughs> Sebas, I don't have to use my hands now. Maybe I should. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, bored. Yeah, that's, that's enough <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, that's enough of the Lazy Susan. Okay, I think I'll stick with my handheld Lazy Susan. Okay, it is ready to go. And yeah, I want a big slice, because you know, because I just want a big slice. <sighs> Look at that! Ah! Okay, I'm gonna plate this a little bit differently since it's so thick, it's like a monolith. All right, and then just because, you know, we had a little extra and I'm a little extra. A little extra jam and then, this is very uncommon but I love brittle and I also think it's like really pretty and you know, we need a little extra crunch. So we're just gonna break this up over the top and it's gonna be delicious. Um, okay, so I kind of don't know how to eat this but there we go, okay. You know what? Is this how you suggest serving it? Yeah. <laughs> mm. The first thing I get is the, um, the mascarpone, a little bit of the lemon, and then you get that really, really nice strawberry rhubarb. Now, with all the other accoutrements, Mm-hmm. Now you've got like the addition of the texture, the nuttiness, the caramelliness. Definitely you have to make the brittle. Don't skip that step. It's really, really important. It's gonna take your icebox cake to icebox Sunday. And who doesn't love a good Sunday? You can find this recipe at food52.com. I'm so done with this. Food 52 in their studio. They're lazy Susan. No smoke machines. I'm out of here. Josh, get me a car.